and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. In the last video, we talked about solutions where we have a solute dissolved in a solvent. We saw the solute could be a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and it turns out that there are lots of situations where we see solutions in the natural world. Everything from the fluid in your cells to the water in lakes and streams is a solution, and the amount of solute in these solutions has a big impact on how they behave. So we're going to do a deep dive into the theory behind solutions and what they can do. But before we can do that, we need to talk more about concentration. And that's what I want to do today. We've been using concentration since the early days of General Chemistry 1. And up till now, we've always used the same unit, molarity. To refresh your memory, the molarity is the moles of solute per liters of solution. That's the unit that chemists like us use the most often, but there are several other concentration units we could use, and they're very useful in certain situations. Today, we'll look at each of those different concentration units and talk about how and when to use them. To start off with, let's do a quick calculation with the unit you already know how to use, the molarity. That way, we'll have something to compare to when we look at the other kinds of units. Suppose we dissolve 35.0 grams of sodium chloride, and you dissolve it in water until you have 700 mils of solution total. What's the molarity of the solution? As we saw earlier, the molarity is the moles of solute over the liters of solution. The liters of solution is easy. We have 700 milliliters, so that's 0 0.700 liters. For the moles of solute, we'll use the periodic table. By now, you should be comfortable using the periodic table to determine the moles of sodium chloride. I'll do it in this example, but this is a step I'm going to skip in future problems. Anyway, we have 35.0 grams of sodium chloride. From the periodic table, we find out that NaCl has a mass of 58.442 grams per mole. We want the grams to cancel, so it goes in the denominator, and the one mole goes up top. That gives us 0 0.599 moles of NaCl. So we plug that into our formula for molarity, and we find out that we have a 0 0.856 molar solution. Remember, the symbol for molarity is a capital M, not lowercase. That'll be important later in this video. Now, let's look at some other concentration units. One of these is the molality. The molality is similar to the molarity, but with two important differences. The molality is the moles of solute over the kilograms of solvent. So, the numerator is the same as in the molarity, but the denominator is different in two ways. First, it's in kilograms. But second, it's kilograms of the solvent only not the whole solution. I really want to stress that because it's a common mistake that people make. If you use the kilograms of solution, you will get an incorrect molality. So let's try to determine the molality of the NaCl solution we used in the previous example. Again, we have 35.0 grams of sodium chloride and 700 mils of total solution. We do need one additional piece of information in order to solve this problem, which is this. The density of the solution is 1.03 grams per milliliter. So let's solve this one. The molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. We already calculated the moles of NaCl back when we were working on the molarity. It's 0 0.599 moles. To get the kilograms of solvent, we'll need to use the density. As you know, density is equal to the mass of a solution divided by its volume. If you've forgotten that, you might want to look at the very first video of General Chemistry 1, where we talked about the density. Anyway, the density is 1.03 grams per milliliter, and the volume is 700 milliliters. We can use this to find the mass of the solution, which is 721 grams. Now, what we want in the denominator is the mass of the solvent, not the mass of the solution, which is what we just calculated. The solution is made up of the solvent and solute. So to get the mass of the solvent only, we need to subtract the mass of the NaCl from the mass of the solution. So we subtract 35.0 grams of NaCl 
from the 721 grams of solution. That leaves us with 686 grams of solvent. We want the kilograms of solvent, so that's 0 0.686 kilograms. We use that in the formula for molality, which gives us a molality of 0 0.873. The symbol for molality is a lowercase m. Make sure you don't use a capital M, which is the symbol for molarity. Using the wrong unit for molality or molarity is worth points on your homework and tests. So, we've seen two different concentration units, molarity and molality. Let's look at another one. One useful new unit is the mole fraction, which has the symbol x. When we have more than one ingredient in a solution, the mole fraction for a particular component is the moles of that ingredient divided by the total moles for all the components. Let's try finding the mole fraction for each of the components in our NaCl solution. We have two different ingredients, the water and the NaCl. The mole fraction of each is the moles of the ingredient over the total moles of everything. So, for the mole fraction of water, first we need to know the moles of water. When we were working on the molality, we figured out that we have 686 grams of water. We can use the periodic table to find out the moles, and it turns out to be 38.1 moles of water. So, the mole fraction of water is the moles of water, 38.1, divided by the moles of water plus NaCl. That gives us a mole fraction of 0 0.985 for the water. Notice that the units all canceled out, so the mole fraction actually doesn't have a unit. So we've calculated the mole fraction of water, so now let's do it for the NaCl. That's the moles of NaCl divided by the moles of all the ingredients. So it's 0 0.599 moles over the sum of the moles of NaCl and water. That gives us a mole fraction of 0 0.0155 for the NaCl. Notice that the mole fractions of all the ingredients add up to give us 1. That should always be true. The mole fractions for all ingredients in a solution always should total 1. So now we're up to three different ways of measuring the concentration. Molarity, molality, and mole fraction. Let's learn a few more. Three concentration units that are very similar to each other are the mass percentage, the parts per million, and the parts per billion. We calculate each of these by dividing the mass of the ingredient we're interested in by the total mass of all the ingredients. We then multiply it by 100 for the mass percentage, by a million for the parts per million, or by a billion for the parts per billion. Let's try it for the ingredients in our salt water solution. For the NaCl, we have 35.0 grams on top, and in the bottom, we have the mass of the NaCl plus the water. For the percent by mass, that gives us 4.85%. For the parts per million, we get 48,500 ppm. And for the parts per billion, we get 48,500,000 ppb. Meanwhile, for the water, we have 686 grams of water on top and the total mass on the bottom. That gives us 95.1%, 951,000 ppm, and 951 million ppb. Notice that the percent by mass for the NaCl and the water add up to give us a total of 100%. Since our solution only contains NaCl and water, it makes sense that the two of them together total 100%. So, these are all the concentration units that we've learned. Molarity, molality, mole fraction, percent by mass, parts per million, and parts per billion. Let's try one more example. This time, we'll start with one concentration unit and we'll convert it into the other units. You might know that in the United States, Coca-Cola contains high fructose corn syrup to make it sweet. However, in some other countries, Coke actually contains cane sugar, also known as sucrose, which has a formula C12 
H22 O11. This kind of coke has a density of 1.05 grams per milliliter, and the sucrose in it has a molarity of 0 0.306 molar. Now that we know that, let's figure out the molality, the mole fraction, and the mass percentage of the sucrose in coke. We'll try the molality first. Coca-Cola is almost entirely made of sugar and water. The flavoring and coloring and other ingredients are only a tiny amount of what's in coke. So we'll just pretend that sucrose and water are the only two ingredients. The molarity tells us that there are 0.306 moles of sucrose in every liter of solution. So for the molality, we need to know the moles of sucrose and the kilograms of solvent, which is water. So the first thing we need is the moles of sucrose. We can get that using the molarity we're given. The concentration of our coke is the same no matter what size sample we take, so we can choose to have our sample be any size we want. Since the molarity has units of moles per liter, it makes sense to imagine that we take a sample of coke that has a volume of one liter. If we do that, the molarity tells us that we have 0.306 moles of sucrose. Some of you might be a little concerned that I just arbitrarily decided to pretend that the sample of coke we have has a volume of one liter. Actually, we could have chosen any volume at all. Instead of one liter, we could have chosen to have our sample size be 10,000 liters, or just two milliliters, or any volume you could imagine in between. Since the concentration's the same, no matter how large or small our sample is, we'd get the same answer when we eventually finish the problem. So, then why did I pick one liter for the volume? I only did that because it made it easy to calculate the moles of sucrose. If we have one liter of a 0.306 molar solution, that means we must have 0.306 moles of solute. If we had chosen a different volume, we'd still be able to solve the problem, but the calculation would be a little bit harder. Notice that I only chose one liter as the sample size because we were given the concentration and molarity, where the denominator is one liter of solution. If we'd been given the molality instead, I would have chosen a different sample size. In that case, I would have chosen to have the sample size be just right so that we'd have one kilogram of solvent, because that would make it easy to figure out the moles of solute. And if we had been given the mole fraction of one of the ingredients, I would again have chosen our sample size to be different. I would have chosen it to be just the right size so that the total number of moles was one. That would make it really easy to figure out the number of moles of the ingredient. Notice that in each of these examples, I chose a sample size that would give me a one in the denominator that will always make our calculations a little easier. Here's one last example. If we were given the mass percentage of one of the components, I would pretend that our sample was just the right size to weigh a total of 100 grams. That way, it would be really easy to calculate the mass of the component. Anyway, back to the Coke. We've decided that we have 1.00 liters of Coke which means we have 0.306 moles of sucrose. To finish calculating the molality, we need to know the kilograms of solvent. We'll start by using the density to figure out the mass of the solution. The density is 1.05 grams per milliliter, which is the mass divided by the volume. We know the volume is one liter. Don't forget to change the volume into milliliters since that's what the density is using. So, our mass turns out to be 1,050 grams. But wait, that's not what goes in the denominator of our equation. We need the kilograms of solvent, which is water. But the 1,050 grams is the mass of the whole solution. To get the mass of the solvent, we need to subtract the mass of the sucrose. To do that, we'll use the periodic table we have 0.306 moles of sucrose. And from the periodic table, we find out that a mole of sucrose weighs 342.2943 grams. That gives us a mass of 105 grams for the sucrose. So the mass of the solvent is 1,050 grams 
minus 105, or 945 grams. We convert that into kilograms and then put it in our formula for molality, which finally gives us a molality of 0.325 m. Remember to use a lowercase m here. Next, let's figure out the mole fraction of sucrose. We need the moles of sucrose on top and the total moles in the denominator. We've already figured out the moles of sucrose. It's 0.306. To get the total moles, we just need to know the moles of water. Just a few minutes ago, we figured out that there are 945 grams of water, so we can figure out how many moles this is by using the periodic table. When we do, we find out that we have 52.5 moles of water. We'll plug that into our formula, and we find out that the mole fraction of sucrose is 0.00580. Remember, the mole fraction doesn't have units. Finally, let's figure out the mass percentage of sucrose. This one will be easy. We already figured out that we have 105 grams of sucrose. And in the denominator, we'll put the total mass of the sucrose and the water. We multiply that by 100, which gives us a result of 10.0%. So our bottle of Coke is 10% sugar by mass. That's a lot of sugar. You'll get lots more practice with these concentration units in class and in the homework, and it'll definitely show up on tests. More importantly, we'll be using these new units in the next few lessons. We'll be able to use them to understand lots of different behaviors of solutions, including things like osmosis and evaporation. In fact, we'll get started on that in the very next video, so I hope you'll join me for that. In the meantime, have a good week!